right. Joining us now, Dr. Sarah Wollaston, who defected from the Conservatives to Change UK and then joined the Lib Dems. And we've heard a lot from the Lib Dems on revoke, on second referendum. I know um, Joe Swinson was talking to my colleague Andrew uh, about many of those issues, about the broader scheme of where the party, the direction of the party. But I wanted um, tonight, Sarah, to use your expertise as a doctor to better understand one of the party's I think less understood positions. The Lib Dems have been clear in the manifesto about gender self-identification and they've said complete reform of the Gender Recognition Act to remove the requirement for medical reports, scrap the fee, recognise non-binary identities. Trans groups have been ignored and discriminated against for a long time, we recognise that. So are you saying now that anyone can self-identify, they can self-identify as a woman without now the need for med medical certification? Well, what I would say is that imagine how humiliating it must be to undergo um, medical examinations and certifications in, in those circumstances. And also going back to your point about the level of discrimination trans people have faced, and two in five trans people are subject to um, hate crimes. So trying to sweep away some of the prejudices and barriers I think is important. And I think there are sometimes fears are whipped up about um, you know, people assuming that then this must be very dangerous to other women. But I don't think it threatens women that trans people can identify and self-identify. So let me understand then, do you believe that gender is assigned at birth? I mean, as a doctor, do you, would you use that phrase, it's assigned at birth, or do you believe in biological sex? W were, you, were you born a woman or was that assigned to you at but birth? Of course, that is how we have been for, for, for centuries, for, you know, that we have assigned a gender at birth. It's almost the first thing that people ask when a, a, a baby is born. Is, is this a boy or is this a girl? But there are very many people who feel that they are in the wrong body and whose lives are being made miserable so by the prejudices. you biological sex at no, birth then? What, or... I, what I believe is, yes, of course a baby is born and the first thing people ask is, is, is this a, a boy or a girl? Um, but as you go through life, actually many people feel that they are in the wrong, they are being assigned the wrong gender. So I think we, we can sometimes get completely caught up on this and forget that the individuals at the heart of this, who, as they go through life, feel profoundly that they're in the wrong body right. and are, are then trapped by society in that identity. And there is huge identity for people who are trying to work mm -hmm. out um, who they are. If anyone can self-identify as a woman, they can then inhabit spaces that are meant for women only. You're happy with that? What I would say is that there's a kind of um, uh, sort of assumption that somehow trans people are a threat. No, and, um, no we, it's a very no, simple question. But are you happy? Are you happy that anyone who can identify as a woman is allowed in a woman-only space? Right. Well, I think the point is what happens to people who are identifying as women who are then using men-only spaces, that they're often subject to quite serious violence. And therefore, the, the, the idea that somehow these people are a, a, a threat to other women, it's, I think, is an assumption we should It's not that challenge. somehow, we're, just, we're looking at the women in this case. Yes. If police forces record male rapists as women by their own self-identification, is that OK? The point is that there will be, of course, a very tiny number of individuals who will seek to exploit this in order to be, behave as violent criminals towards women. And, and you need a separate route for those people. There are some people who will be a threat, who need to be identified. And, but there uh, but isn't that a separate happens. route, is there? I mean, you, 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 but the point you, is you, 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 are, you yes. are the patron mm -hmm. of rape crisis. It calls itself a feminist organisation mm -hmm. run by women for women. Mm -hmm. Now. If people identify as women, male body people identify as women, are they allowed in your rape crisis centre where there may be abused women mm -hmm. who are seeking refuge from violence? They, they should obviously not. If there are women who feel uncomfortable in that situation with people who may appear to be men, of course you, you wouldn't be necessarily being seen in a group setting. That's the point. But it's is their right, isn't it? This is, this is their they refuge. Can, yes. This is their safe exactly. house. This is their space. Indeed. So those, those women, if they, if they feel that would, they would be uncomfortable, they don't need to be seen together. There's an assumption that when you are within a, a rape crisis centre that you would 
you would always therefore have to accept that there was a transgender person in the room with you. That wouldn't be the case in, in any case that, that women will often would be seen individually. That? Would you take that explanation to, to your rape crisis centre? Mm -hmm. Would you say to them, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sorry you, you might be worried about this, we'll put you in a separate room? Or would you say you can have deep empathy and understanding for those who are transitioning, those who fought long and hard to be heard by the society, and yet, why would those advances come at the expense of women's rights and very often vulnerable women's rights? Exactly. But as, as I say, go back to my point that there's an assumption that everyone would have to be seen in the same space at the same time. They wouldn't necessarily have to be seen in the same place. Well, take it or away from the Rape Crisis Centre. Take it to a swimming pool changing room. Take it to a toilet. Take it to a changing room. Take it to somewhere where women feel they've earned the right to go and change of in course. privacy. Of course, I, I accept that. But what I would say is, coming back to transgender people, if you are um, a transgender woman who is being forced to be changing in an all-male changing room, that is also a deeply uncomfortable experience. And in practice, many people will choose to be in an individual cubicle. Now, if people are behaving in a way that is, is clearly threatening to women within a public setting. So, for it's example, not just someone. About threatening. Of course, if anyone's threatening anyone, then yes. you'd hope they get kicked out. Mm -hmm. It is the sense, Sarah, that women thought that they had earned the right mm -hmm. to have changing rooms or toilets or, or perhaps a rape centre or a safe house and know that that was for women. You've said for women, run by women. And yet the Lib Dems. They know this is a complicated it place, a but complicated your place. manifesto, though, has no, made clear, be, hasn't it, clear? If that there you is can self-identify. Okay. Can I just be clear? If there is somebody who is, is clearly not transitioning, who is um, a, a somebody who comes as somebody who is um, very obviously um, still physically male, changing within a group setting in a female changing room, that's inappropriate because it makes people feel uncomfortable. But I think in practice, people who are transitioning would not choose to make other people this feel uncomfortable in this Your way. manifesto is about law. It's about law. And when women may read this in your manifesto and say, I don't know how I can vote for the Lib Dems anymore because they seem to be erasing our rights. I don't think it is erasing women's rights. I, I think that what this is recognising is that there is a group of people in our society who have been deeply discriminated against for a very long time. Um, and I think that people are, are, are whipping this up to make women feel as if somehow every time they They're go to alarmist. a swimming pool... So people who I, raise this are being alarmist? I think that people are presenting this as if this is going to be an everyday occurrence and that people who are trans people will want to behave in a way that makes w other people feel uncomfortable. In practice, that's extremely unlikely. Most of okay. the people I know who are trans people do not want to make others feel uncomfortable. So. And I think it's a form of, of prejudice that we're, we're sort of promoting this so idea that they would. To, to I think that, that some people are are promoting it okay. in a way as if to say they, they would want to do that. I think in practice it would be very, very, very uncommon. Sarah Wollaston, thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Thank you.